Hello and welcome to ABP Education. A very good afternoon to everybody. And uh, uh, today I'd like to welcome you all to the next webinar in the Campus to Career series. Uh, but before that, uh, I'd like to uh, talk about abpeducation.com. Uh, abpeducation.com is a portal recently launched by the ABP group and uh, everything that happens in the higher education sector uh, is reported and written about here and including exams, results, uh, and even global universities abroad are covered by abpeducation.com. Uh, this Campus to Career series started on August 12th with the Bengal Education Leaders Summit. And uh, it, was, uh, uh, the, uh, it was attended by uh, Mr. Partho Chatterjee, the State Education Minister. And uh, now the next uh, you know, subject today of the webinar is Hospitality, Atiti Devo Bhava in the New Norm. Uh, with this, I'd like to introduce our moderator. Uh, moderator is Husna Tara Prakash, Punti Estate and Boutique Hotel, uh, India. With, like, with this, I'd like to hand over the session to her. Have a great one, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon um, to our audience, to our students, and anyone else who's interested in hospitality. Um, I'm very happy to uh, be a part of this uh, panel today, moderating um, a group of eminent personalities from the hospitality industry. We have two um, experts from the actual hospitality business and three experts from the education side of things, from three very reputable uh, universities and colleges. Uh, so I'll start by introducing uh, Mr. Saurav Ghoshal, who is currently general manager of the Vivanta Taj um, Hotel in Kolkata. Um, however, Mr. Ghoshal has also worked for um, three of the largest groups in hospitality, including the Hyatt, the Novotel, um, and a couple of properties uh, that belong to the Taj, uh, spanning um, a career in Delhi, um, eight years in Dubai at the iconic Burj Al Arab, um, and then um, the Novotel in Hyderabad. And his journey with um, the uh, Taj group started in Chennai at the Taj Clubhouse, uh, went on to Zambia and uh, Lusaka, and he returned to Bombay, to Mumbai, to work at the Taj president, and then with the Gateway and Vivanta in Kolkata. And he is also a certified wine taster. So we look forward to receiving um, tips and um, his thoughts on the industry from um, a veteran uh, from the larger hospitality groups uh, of the world. Uh, next, we'll have Mr. Ajay Ravla, um, who will be bringing us a different perspective from perhaps the more boutique and experiential um, world of hospitality. Um, I've had the privilege of knowing Mr. Ravla for many years now. He's a third generation Punjabi living in Bengal. He calls himself a Bongiabi. And just like me, he stumbled into hospitality, didn't he? <laughs> so um, it's something that he's uh, uh, put together very, very passionately and uh, with a great eye for detail. He's an alumni of the Mayo College Ajmer. He's an environmentalist with an eye for architecture and aesthetics, a keen mind with a self-driven hunger to learn more and to evoke the lost and untold histories of our past. From constructing the nationally important AGNI base in Chandipur, Orissa, while living in a thatched roof hut, to founding the national award-winning export house, the East India Natural Goods and Company, to restoring a 300-year-old Rajbari to its former glory, he is committed to promoting Bengal's cultural and architectural heritage. Um, he's currently managing director of the East India Natural Goods Company, as well as managing director of Bavali Estate Private Limited, under whose umbrella the Heritage Boutique Resort, the Rajbari Bavali comes. And um, Mr. Ravla will be talking to us about uh, the other side of hospitality, the smaller, more experiential uh, careers that you can, you can join. Uh, we will then move on to Miss um, Maitri Chaudhary, who is Group Director of the IAM Institute of Hotel Management. Uh, the founder director of IAM, uh, Ms. Chaudhary, did her post-graduation in English from Calcutta University and has been instrumental in shaping IAM over a period of 30 years. She is a passionate leader and a visionary educationist, and her focus has been on bringing the best of education to her students. She has initiated collaborations with international universities of repute, repute with um, the group. So we look forward to hearing her thoughts on hospitality 
Education. Um, we will then uh, move on to another veteran in education, Dr. Millen, principal of the College of Management and Technology, NSHM Knowledge Campus in Kolkata and Durgapur. Um, his organization development, effectiveness, diversity, cognition, organization, culture, management roots, and ancient Indian thoughts on management are his key focus areas. He, is all, he also conducts training in attitude, personality, learning and perception, leadership and team building, workplace challenges and more. All of these very, very important in the field of hospitality. And he started his career with the Oberoi Amar Vilas in Agra. So he also has hands-on experience in the industry. Um, and our final speaker today Thank will you, be Jayant Sargosh, um, who is the Dean um, of Guru Nanak Institute of, Hos of Hotel Management, the JIS Group. Um, and Mr. Ghosh is an expert hospitality trainer. He has conducted international competitions such as international chef competition, international mocktail competition, international fruit carving competition, and the international cake icing competition with participation from over 40 countries. He's been blogged about, no, he has blogged about food as medicine, and he was also a chef in Star Hotels before joining the teaching profession. Um, he was the principal in charge of the Dolphin School of Hotel Management before his current stint at the Guru Nanak Institute of Hotel Management as the Dean of Education. So we have an expert panel for you today and um, let's move straight in to um, calling Mr. Gaurav Goshal to share his thoughts on hospitality as a career, the challenges we face today as well as the future um, after these troubled times of covid um, have moved over. Welcome, Mr. Gosha. Good afternoon, Rusnaji. Please call me Saurav. I, I feel very awkward when you call me. <laughs> I feel old as well. Uh, very good afternoon, eminent panelists, and good afternoon, all the attendees of this session. Um, I'm absolutely privileged and honored to be part of this. And uh, of course, I will try and share some of my perspective uh, to the situation that uh, we are in. And as we all uh, have, have been through over the last five, six months, um, I should start saying that hospitality industry as a whole, um, over my 24, 25 years in the industry of what I've seen, I've always seen the industry evolve. I've always seen the industry come through challenges and that those challenges that we come through always keep, makes us think and reinvent ourselves. So when there was a situation of uh, a lot of terrorist activities globally, different global uh, hospitality groups reinvented themselves of how they looked at hotel security. And similarly, when there were many instances of fire safety, we reinvented ourselves in how we look at the perspective of fire safety. And now uh, we are into a situation that, um, we have got this pandemic on our hands, and it, it then necessitates us um, to reinvent ourselves based on the situation that we're in and the demand of the situation. So uh, what I'm trying to get at is this instances in different times, in different parts of the world, actually acts as catalysts to strengthen ourselves as an industry. And, and hygiene and sanitation, which is the highlight under circumstances over the last five, six months and for the future, um, has always been an integral part of the industry. It's not something which is new. Uh, it's, it's, it's a cornerstone of how we run hotels. You cannot think of running a hotel without proper hygiene and sanitation standards. We have got various audit processes, internal and external in various hotels of different stages. And that's how we have lived over the years. And now, pandemic comes in and what this does to us probably is to see how we can get into further depth of sanitization and hygiene. How can we strengthen that further to ensure uh, that we give the sense of trust and confidence to the guest who comes to our hotel. The core of hospitality never changes. It still remains the same. Certain uh, paraphernalia of the hospitalities needs to get readjusted with these new times, the new normal. Say for an example, when a guest comes uh, through our door, we had this tradition of welcoming a guest with an RTT card. That's probably 
is not something people would be comfortable doing that under circumstances. But that doesn't change the way we welcome a hotel or a guest to a hotel or take him to the, to the room. Uh, when uh, someone in a palace hotel gets inside a palace hotel, there was this concept of showering flower petals. But showering of flower petals might not be acceptable anymore. But the whole welcoming process of uh, in a palace hotel will still remain the same. The, the human warmth cannot be taken away. And the different processes that involves into welcoming someone will still be there. Um, there will be new adjustment. Uh, we never, uh, apart from a few uh, part of the world and a few areas where it was imperative, uh, a mask and a glove and a uh, hand sanitization was never a part of room amenities, which is now, which is a change that we had to bring in uh, because of the pandemic and we did that. And, and, and sanitizing, say for an example, uh, we have a new process of sanitizing all the luggages uh, that comes into a hotel. Well, this was something which was uh, a part of the practice in different parts of the world. And 10 years back, there are certain hotels that I've worked in had this as a standard process where luggages, when it comes in, gets taken through a different areas, get sanitized, clean before it's been sent up to a guest room. So it now has become an imperative process for most of the hotels and all the hotels. So what have happened is, uh, some of the benefits, some of the processes, which for a lot of hotels were differentiators, the pandemic has made them imperative processes. Now we'll have to go by them for sure. Um, it also has uh, made us look into the technology part of business, where probably for a lot of hotels, um, uh, a, a, a touchless check-in was part of an enhanced process or a differentiator. Now, touchless check-in is something a guest demands to, or it's touchless payment or, or a, a room check-in, keyless entry to a room, which were not an imperative process for most of the hotels, I will now become a process which has to be followed through and then we'll have to adapt to it technologically to ensure like IHCL is currently doing with this a concept of eye test. We'll have to adapt for based on the times that we have been and move forward. But on the overall box of hospitality, on the overall perspective of how we hospitality operates in hotels, it will still remain the same. The structure, the core structure, will still remain the same. It's only going to get strengthened with new processes that this uh, pandemic has facilitated and necessitated us to think over, reinvent ourselves, and move forward. And and that's from different perspective as well. From hotel designing perspective, the hotel designers now will have to look at how they can design a hotel which is more robust in terms of sanitization. How we, it also necessitated us to think of uh, alternate revenue generation areas. So now when we build hotels, we probably have to see how we can incorporate alternate revenue and generating ideas into it, how we can utilize space more, um, uh, reduce wastage of space in our hotels, and so on and so forth. So uh, overall, yes, it's, it's, it's been a heightened sense of sanitization, a heightened sense of uh, uh, cleanliness that is to be incorporated. But this is just strengthening what we already have. I think uh, the only change that I feel probably has come up and which is a deterrent is that a guest always uh, used to think that entering a hotel, you'll have a smiling person welcoming you, a person with a big smile will welcome you uh, to the hotel. Now that smile will get covered up with the mask that you'll have to wear. Probably that's the change that we foresee will happen. But otherwise, hospitality is normal, stronger, and ready to bounce back. Great. Thank you so much, Saurav. That's a very positive outlook, I think, for the audience. And I would absolutely agree with you. I was trying to define the, the definition of hospitality just before this, um, this webinar. And it's really the art of entertaining guests. And it translates to the business of entertaining guests and visitors and strangers who, you know, go away, sometimes your friends. And that will never change. The heart and the soul of hospitality will always remain the same. And this pandemic has helped us strengthen, like you said, and reinvent to make it a stronger industry, um, an industry that's open to so many people of different backgrounds from your housekeeping to your kitchen staff to your front office managers. Um, it's, it's such a fabulous industry that cannot die because people no. will always want to eat out. They will always no. want to travel. 
And uh, the signs even now with the numbers sort of settling a little bit is that people are just desperate to get out. So um, it shouldn't be something that students looking towards this career are worried about. But I loved your, your concepts of reinvention, um, the fact that it's been a catalyst, um, that we have to find different revenue models and we have to strengthen the current protocols that we've already had in place and just make them stronger. Yeah. And I would just add that we have to just make sure that we stay sustainable because these mountains of plastic gloves and masks in right. natural pits is something that another sort of set of, um, of challenges that going to try and sort out how to, you know, we were moving towards you know, single use, lack of single use plastic. And, and, and now the pandemic has brought on a mountain of, of plastic gloves. So that's something that I think the new world and the new world of hospitality needs to change. So we will bring you back at, um, at the end to take some more questions, but I'd now like to invite Mr. Ajay Ravla to share his thoughts um, on um, his brand of hospitality and the way ahead. Thank you, Ajay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um... I own a 300-year-old uh, Rajbari, which I converted into uh, into a hotel. It took it was a 10-year journey, and the only reason I did it, as everybody who knows me understands fully, was my passion for the place. I was quite distraught, like everybody else in the industry, when uh, we got hit by Corona, and uh, that's when you thought that things weren't going to get any worse. And along came Amphan, which really took the wind out of our sails. And for those of us who were not city properties and were out there in, in villages like we are, it was very extreme not just to see the damage that was caused to us, but also to the to the grievous hurt that went that, that the villagers had to suffer. One of the things that I learned through that journey of uh, of living in the village without electricity for three three weeks almost uh, was that people are very resilient and the same villagers who were so careful about putting up bamboo barricades so that nobody comes into their hamlet and their spaces aren't interfered with started coming together to rebuild and as they rebuild I found that their confidence in dealing with other situations have also gone up. So I'm using that as an analogy to say that if you look around you, like Mr. Ghosh also said a little while ago, people are very resilient and very innovative. So there's hundreds of things that are happening in the hospitality industry that weren't happening before. And I'm, I'd like to address this to the students in the audience who are wondering whether this is a good, good career to pick still. Is it going to go downhill? Is there... You know, we are hearing about people being laid off and all these address issues have to be addressed, to my mind, very squarely. Most of us start doing what we want to do because we have a passion for what we want, what we would like to do. And for those amongst you who are viewing a career in hospitality, I think it's one of the finest things you can do. It, it's one of, those, uh, one of those careers where you can keep yourself grounded and yet enjoy the best and the finest things in the world. Whether it was uh, a wine competition that we were talking about earlier or anything else that you do. So the way I'm seeing it, we opened about a month ago and I can share my personal uh, journey post, uh, post lockdown opening. People were very tentative about coming out to us. And I can now say after a month, I think just over a little over a month of being open that it's while people are not going to travel overseas for a while, I think domestic business world over is going to be very strong. And in India with the kind of population that we have and the kind of resilience that we have and also the fact that we are the biggest jugadus in the world. We always come up with something to fix a problem. We are innovative. We are sharp. I don't think, I think the worst is behind us. So here's what we've done. Uh, here's what we've done for our, uh, for our guests. It's very important for guests to visibly notice that everything is clean, clear and sanitized. But what we've also learned is that we have a four acre estate. We have a lot of space. So we try and, and people are coming out in groups that they're comfortable with. People that they hung out with through the lockdown, whose 
kind of travel path is known to each other and therefore they're not worrying whether they're infected and that that worry is also going to go down as we go along so we make sure that we have different dining spaces for people we make sure that we have uh, we have timings and schedules if for instance you don't want to crowd a space and people are very happy to cooperate and say okay you're seating 20 we'll take the next seating or we'll sit somewhere else and as i'm as i'm greeting more and more guests what i'm getting from them is oh wow it's wonderful to be out it's fantastic to be out why didn't we do it earlier so that buoyancy is coming back and i would unhesitatingly say that uh, uh, the innovation is just beginning it's going there's going to be so much every five star hotel in in the country and everywhere else is suddenly on wheels deliveries are happening with these smart young men coming to deliver food, great food at your doorstep people have you know it is just changed the entire dimension of how you dine there are people who are offering butler services chef services i saw the other day i don't know if it was from the hyatt or the marriott i saw something that said uh, you know call in a chef at home and we'll come and cook for you wow does it get more personalized than that and as husna said earlier hospitality is uh, is the art or the business of entertaining and that business is never going to stop it's going to carry on so that's my two cents worth thank you ajay yes wise words indeed and absolutely it's hospitality is a feel good factor and it it touches every section of society and um you know community is such a part of hospitality be it in a city where you have local employment and even out in a village like um, mr avla was saying after the cyclone it was you know his setup and his infrastructure that helped a lot of the villagers and then they probably supported him back with you know getting uh, systems in place after covid so it involves so many people from so many different levels of society and different types of 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 regions and you know geography is in the bar um it's it's a, an industry which will allow you to travel meet interesting people be relate you know relocated to different countries every few years so it's never going to end the art of entertaining and be it in a hospital or in a restaurant or in a five star hotel or in a safari lodge um you will be able to find your fit um and that's the beauty of hospitality you may be not the sort of person who wants to interact with people you'll find a, a space in the back end of the, the whole engine of running that hospitality outlet or you're a very social person and you'll be right in the front or you'll be the policy changer or you'll be the sanitation manager there are so many different opportunities within food within management within socializing which um you know will give you this sort of variety of of um careers within within this industry and it's it's far from from dying and i'm already seeing questions coming in from the audience about when will things get back to normal will there be competition for jobs what about salaries it's all going to come back it has to come back because it's the feel good outlet that everyone in lockdown needs right now um you know they they they're getting school at home they're getting food at home but they're not getting to travel and as soon as things open up the first thing everybody is going to want to do is to travel so the jobs will open up again they may be temporarily at a lull but they will come back the salaries will come back the opportunities will come back and uh, most of you who are embarking in your careers need to to sort of connect closely with the institutions that we're going to now talk to next um so that you're cementing these next few years and investing the next few years when there could be a slight um phase of recovery into your education into as um sort of a saying becoming better at what you're doing reinventing the careers that you wanted to form and using um hospitality as a base and on that note um i'm delighted to in, to, to invite um miss maitri choudhury the group director of the iam institute of hotel management to share her thoughts um on the way ahead um, thank you husna Uh, and good afternoon uh, viewers it's indeed a great pleasure to be a part of today's webinar on atithi devo bhava in the new normal we all understand that the world is going through challenging times but we also understand uh, that the normal that we have understood before may never come back 
and we need to gear ourselves to meet the challenges thrown at us by the pandemic. So what has now become the normal? The lockdowns, quarantines, masks, washing hands, taking vitamins, nutrient-rich food, physical distancing, and the omnipresent support of technology are now a must to continue, I think, for a lifetime. Over the last few months, there has been a gradual acceptance that uh, this virus will not disappear suddenly. And uh, we are learning to cope with our regular work, adjusting to the new normal. The hospitality industry is ready to fight back, being very resilient and adapt to the contemporary management style. From the hospitality educator's perspective, we can feel the restlessness of the students who are confined to their homes for the last five months and the ensuing uncertainty that clouds their future. But the good news is that the hotels and the hospitality industry has opened up for business, adopting the new safety protocols. And almost each hotels have launched its new programs and new protocols. And we have seen different procedures of contactless services being followed. Feels very rich. Hotels and all that fall into the purview of uh, the hospitality sector has graduated uh, from being aesthetically clean to clinically clean accommodation. These are the changes that we have seen in the hospitality industry. Hospitality has become more technology driven than ever before, right from the check-in procedure to ordering food, contactless services, uh, hygiene alarms, baggage scanners, and the likes. So now in keeping with the change in the, in keeping with this change, I think the hospitality education too has to emerge in its new avatar. We at IAM have spoken at length with the industry to find out the new protocols and changes that have become mandatory and the same is being adopted into the curriculum. The students are now aware what they might be required to do when they join the industry. The students uh, who are the future hoteliers will have to be now multitasking and more than the skill set, the mindset has to change. Uh, whereas earlier the students were focused on specializing in a key operational department, they now have to become an all-rounder. Our trainers too have to be retrained to understand that some of the things that we did before, we shall perhaps never do again. While at the same time, things we never did before has to be now followed religiously. Bridging the gap between what existed and what is to be will now become very, very important. That is from the educator's perspective. Uh, the problem is not over, but we definitely from all sides are surely and definitely trying, learning to live with it. While we understand that the uh, technology uh, will drive the hospitality industry, I would uh, like to call back upon what Mr. Goshal had said some time back uh, in the future. Uh, it is also important to remember that the DNA of hospitality has not changed and technology cannot replace the warmth of the human smiles. So students who are aspiring to join hospitality industry need not worry that the scope of the jobs in this sector will be reduced. I think rather uh, with the technological advancement, uh, a new age of hospitality professionals will emerge. And what will be important for these youngsters now is to sharpen their skill sets, acquire new skills, become very, very digitally savvy, and wherever possible to add on to the qualification online and the change in the mindset to adapt to this new age of hospitality industry. 
I think that is what all the education institutes are gearing up for now. Hospitality has always been very dynamic and resilient. We have been hit earlier by various other uh, situations like uh, SARS, then the security threats. But e every time we have bounced back, and this phase which we are all going through is absolutely temporary. And even uh, what we feel that out of every challenge emerges a new opportunity. And I think uh, this uh, last five months has given us time to rethink, reinvent and create new opportunities for ourselves. Thank you very much, Mr. Audrey. And I, I think um, this is, like you said, this is the ideal time to, to really perfect your skills and to become a hospitality expert. And there are so many webinars, so many certification courses online that you can do um, you know, from your home. You can probably fast track some of them. You can, you know, this, is, this should be looked at as a positive. It should be looked at as times, especially if you're a student looking for a career, because you can really search out the different institutes, search out the different courses and really perfect your skills so that when things do open up and they're opening up already and they will open up even more, you'll be perfectly um, poised to grab those opportunities and also show that you have an edge over others by being a, an all rounder, which I think is very important in the hospitality world. Um, great, so we'll now move on to Dr. Millen, who is principal of um, the College of Management and Technology, um, both in Durgapur and in Kolkata. And um, we'd love to hear your thoughts on the situation. Thank you. Uh, uh, very good evening to all the students, all the panelists and all the distinguished people, those who are watching this program. Thanks to AVP who has organized this wonderful session and especially for the students and people are watching across in our globe that what the change is all about. There are two uh, important people who talked about the industry perspective that what the things have changed. And as an academician, uh, I would like to share some of the thoughts and the practices that what NHHM has, uh, you know, we have just, you know, immediately transform ourselves, the education pedagogy and the delivery style. Uh, before I move to, there's a one very important, you know, quotes which said by Charles Darwin, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is most acceptable to change. So entire student and the academic fraternity, not only in hospitality, in other education, we have evolved so much. As we all know, the hospitality and tourism and hospitality, hotels, education is all about, you know, much more of the practical aspect. But yes, whatever we could do immediately from the March when the lockdown happens, we move immediately to online education. We immediately move to something which we can showcase through online. And some of our team members and the faculty members, we are educating not only the courses, we are also trying to educate people where in turn they can do some kind of practical aspect at home. Uh, in last one and a half months, we have done some kind of signature online event where we have allowed the students to you know, showcase the Eastern India. So we have moved towards the uh, you know, culture, fest, foods, dance and everything. And it was a great platform where the student have showcased. So, you know, everyone is talking about that the hospitality is changing. Yes, we are changing because in last uh, 20, 20 years, we have seen several times there is a, some kind of problem came and in between we have evolved our education system. We have evolved our you know, business. We have evolved our industry in a very different style. So when we talk about the hospitality, right now there are two aspects. One is our academy who are preparing the student who can be in the hotels and the hospitality business. And there are industry who basically accommodate all the students whosoever are passing out every year. There are some questions are there in the mind of the students. What will be their new phase? What our job, you know, you know, job you know, requirement will be there in coming days? But yes, there are challenges just for present. If you talk about it, we talk about the you know, research. Hotel and hospitality and tourism is fourth and fifth worst hit because the first is financial sector. Then we have automobile, then we have MSME sector, and then the hotel and hospitality come. Because it is very easy to see. 
uh, there is a hotel which is a five star hotel in durgapur itc i have visited two or three times entire things have been changed from entry to dine in and when you go out everything is changed and and believe me this is the industry because the attitude is very important my colleague also said that if you have a right attitude and hospitality people have a you know tendency to come back very fast because that it is what what we do another thing i would like to talk about in you know when we talk about in organization behavior is called post traumatic success post traumatic success is something there are several time you must have seen all the big people in the world if they went with some kind of injury or some kind of challenges when they come back they bounce back with very with all kind of forces and when you bounce back because you know you have seen the worst hit right now everyone is looking towards that this is this is hit hotels are looking academic is in as academician we are also facing challenges because students are missing the classroom and believe me because of this corona and pandemic we all have realized the importance of physical teacher at the classroom the students are missing that emotions the students the students are enjoying the online classes we are sharing the videos we are sharing the all the recorded practical session what we had and we are sharing it but again they are saying sir we are missing this and uh, recently at nsm knowledge campus durgapur and kolkata we have received the qs certification we have got highest you know marks we are delivering online we have moved so fast so all my students i am just telling you one thing that we are going to come back we have already come back and the post traumatic growth you can all search and find it out the post -tra uh, traumatic growth is one growth that if you really work very high on it you will come back we are coming back and everyone will come back this is from my end thank you dr milan again another positive message um, out to the students so there is a lot to look forward to online education i i believe is getting better and better and although we are missing that physical classroom presence um we have to just make the best of the fact that now we can see more videos we can read more books that perhaps we wouldn't have had the chance to had we been at the physical campus we would have been busy doing a lot of other things and being distracted in many other ways so all the students who are serious about their careers must use this time to become experts because even when you're just a student or 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 you have a career where you're just a front office manager or a, even a housekeeper if you become an expert in your city in your country in your you know um, um the festivals that are happening in the city then you can be a better hospitality professional at whatever level because that knowledge base is so important so apart from the practical training you should use this time to read books watch videos and you know work on your your knowledge base um so we'll now go on to call mr jayant aghosh um dean of the guru nanak institute of hotel management um to talk about um his institution and how they're handling um their students during this pandemic sure so good afternoon dignitaries good afternoon abp anandu thank you very much abp education for conducting such a nice and interactive webinar for the students as well as for the stakeholders atithi devo bhava is the in the new normal it is a great privilege to be a part of this nice and interactive webinar according to the present situation we are revamping our infrastructure our course curriculum to cope up with the modern trends of the industry many experts and foreign foreign agencies worldwide are talking and taking the stand that the corona virus pandemic is the most challenging crisis the world has faced since the second world war this has caused an unpredictable market crisis that any of the sectors has ever witnessed undoubtedly the hardest hit industry is aviation hospitality tourism which are interdependent on each other hoteliers anticipate the following months might be tough for the hospitality industry and with no definite version of a recovery roop pratap choudhury managing director of noor mahal in karnel said as an independent hotel brand we are the first ones to experience the extreme conditions we are now carefully assessing the challenges and focusing on the re uh, recovery road map the prognosis for revival does not look specially promising as of now considering we have no knowledge of when the restrictions on travel will be lifted the impending worldwide economic recession is a very real threat since it is unlikely that people will have a will have the disposal 
income to travel even after the crisis. Besides this, the fear of infection will persist, said Vivasar Pal from Vasnagar Vilas Palace in Rajasthan. The ongoing lockdown in the country and pause in all domestic and international travel has impacted all segments, domestic, inbound, and outbound, and all verticals, leisure, MICE, heritage, advantage, and need. The crisis has put the tourism business activity of the country, which is estimated at over 28 billion and related activities, to an unimaginable halt. As per Federation of Associations in Indian Tourism and Hospitality, around 70% out of a total estimated workforce of 5.5 crore, direct or indirect, could get unemployed around 3.8 crore. If the full-fledged version revives by October 2020, which we are hoping actually, uh, Sabha Mohan, founder of Rare India feels, in terms of financial value, if the next full-fledged season revives by October of 2020, we could be looking at losses on the current books for the inbound to be closest to 20 to 25%. The domestic and the outbound, the summer, which are their key months are completely wiped out. So the losses can be upward of 40%. Since the impact to the travelers is yet to be gauged and how they will behave post the lockdown is not an easy answer. There will be real fear for health and hygiene. Confidence level are also low and we may see this till last over January. So this is the present situation, but uh, as far as uh, our uh, thinking or our imagination, things will bounce back, especially the hospitality industry will bounce back and to cope up with the modern trends, we are also revamping our educational system. We are also uh, introducing some new courses, some new subjects, and we are teaching the students how to overcome these challenges. Uh, we have introduced such as uh, digital marketing apart from uh, regular subjects we have introduced sales and marketing digital marketing and we are teaching the students how webinars being conducted and how they should uh, participate in the webinar so these technical skills we are giving to the students so that they can learn these uh, things uh, nicely apart from that uh, we have introduced new courses this year also we have, we have introduced uh, from our university that is bba in international advanced hospitality and hotel administration so these courses will combine all the uh, managerial aspects such as uh, sales and marketing, digital marketing, revenue management obviously is one of the major subjects which we'll be teaching to the students so that students can learn and can implement these subjects in the industry later on. Obviously the students have to learn all the subjects. If uh, previously what happened, if the student is interested in FMB service, they are focusing on FMB service only. If they are wanted to be a chef, they're focusing their skills on uh, on uh, culinary skills only. But now we are telling the students that you learn all the subjects and, uh, and uh, post this pandemic, the fresher positions in the hotels will increase. A lot of students will be joining as a fresher because uh, uh, there, there will be more positions uh, for the freshers after this pandemic is over. So we are teaching uh, to the students how uh, you should learn all the subjects simultaneously so that you can get the job. Apart from jobs, we are uh, educating the students how to start their own business maybe uh, uh, some online business or other startups, which will help them to uh, make their career successfully with flying colors. So these are the aspects uh, we are teaching to the students, apart from uh, securing job, uh, uh, they, so that they can be their own, uh, they can start their own uh, business as well. And uh, more to say, Gurnana Kishotil Management is uh, actually uh, reviving and uh, restructuring its infrastructure to cope up with the present situation. But we are really hopeful that the situation will improve and uh, it will bounce back because we all have to go, we all have to travel. Recently, one good news I found in the newspaper that uh, during 15th uh, August or 16th, uh, 16th August in Digha, uh, the, all the rooms were full, means uh, uh, there was no room to be booked in Digha. So a lot of people went to Digha and uh, spent their leisure time. Whenever they got time, they went to Digha and spent their leisure time. And we believe that as soon as this pandemic will over, maybe in January, things will turn around and students uh, or uh, the, uh, uh, the travelers will definitely go and spend their time uh, maybe, maybe in India, in tourist destinations. So we are hopeful that the uh, things will bounce back and we are also teaching the students accordingly so that they can get the proper job. Uh, apart from uh, the regular uh, jobs, we are teaching the students how to uh, uh, find jobs in other sectors, maybe uh, in the uh, retail sectors, 
maybe uh, in other uh, sectors where uh, supply chain management is there because Amazon, Swiggy, Zomato. So these sectors are emerging in a nice way and students may be placed in these sectors apart from five star hotels. So these are the things which we are uh, teaching the students and hopefully the things will bounce back uh, maybe in January. So thank you and that is from my end. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ghosh. And I think the biggest take home from your positivity is the fact that, you know, with armed with a career in hospitality, you can actually apply for a job in so many different sectors. Exactly. From, exactly. You know, retail to, you know, uh, in malls in in hospitals, uh, on flights, airports. Exactly. I mean, it, it's not, hospitality does not only relate to a About job in a hotel, yeah. right? It's, it's to do with a huge range of other and, and sure, if the hotel business isn't hiring for the next year, you could get temporary employment with another company because your skills in people management, in, in organizational logistics, that knowledge that you will pick up from institutes um, like the ones that we've been talking to today is going to give you that edge um, compared to somebody who just goes to engineering college or medical college. You know, you are being trained as all-rounders to deal with emergencies, to deal with daily hospitality, to deal with health and hygiene. You're being trained as experts in all these areas, and that will arm you so well for a career in um, any other sector as well. So thank you um, for that. I also loved um, the fact that you're training them to set up their own businesses because exactly. you know, I, I know um, at least three people from very, very, you know, who have very senior positions in companies that are just not operational at the time who've set up home bakeries. I mean, they're baking cakes at home and selling it to their friends and relatives. Now, it, doesn't, it hasn't bothered them that they're actually CEOs of big travel companies, but they are setting up, you know, so anybody, even if you don't need to already have that, you may be on furlough from your, from your current career, but there are things that you can do. And training like um, what uh, Mr. Ghosh has mentioned will only gear you up positively for that. So again, it must, this lockdown and this pandemic must be looked as um, a positive. Um, so we're now going to um, take some of the audience questions and um, I'm going to address some of the hardest ones to Mr. Gosha to sort of first. Um, I'm afraid you're going to have to tackle the questions on, um, you know, the, the fears that I know many of the students in the audience have. Um, in terms, I mean, one of the first questions that was posted about how much time before required for hospitality um, for the hospitality sector to come out from this um, crisis. I think we've already answered that. It's already back, um, whether it's um, chefs coming home to prepare gourmet dinners, to Swiggy, Zomato, to staycations, to work from home, uh, sorry, work from a resort. You know, there's this new, instead of work from home, it's now work from WFR. Work, you know, you know, workations and work from resorts and stuff like that. So yeah. the industry has all is already coming back. And I know as a business owner myself, we are looking at survival, right? We're looking at just getting through the next year with the minimum revenue we need to pay our staff and to maintain our hotels. We're not thinking of shutting down. We're thinking of surviving, right? Because you have to also look at it um, in the other way that we need to keep our staff safe as well right? We cannot go back to 100% occupancy because then the guests coming into our establishments will infect all of, you know, all of you if you are working with us. So we are as responsible for our staff as we are for our guests, right? So the comeback will be slow and we are in survival mode right now, but it does certainly does not mean that things are over and that you have nothing to look forward to. Um, so um, uh, sort of in terms of Will there be huge competition in the hospitality um, industry after COVID? People are losing jobs right now as the hotels can't hire. What about salaries? What about promotions? I'm just combining all these questions that deal with the same thing. What about the fear of layoffs? Um, what, how will the manpower requirement of future hospitality in industries um, sort of change? Um, again, uh, many questions on layoffs. Uh, so I'd love your, your sort of general thoughts on the reality because, you know, things are um, troublesome um, and we are suffering in many ways. But at the same time, perhaps you could share some optimism and the reality of, um, you know, the hospitality industry from your point of view. But I must say that for any business, for every part of life as we progress, there are setbacks. You can't leave life or expect business to run without setbacks. And this is a setback in a way. Well, the expanse of this setback is broad. 
It has got a global impact and it is an impact from all around. So it's a bit ser more serious than what it was. But um, I will take an example in 2003 when I was in Dubai and we had this Iraq war uh, during that time. And our hotel occupancies during that period came down to four or five rooms. It was a setback for the city and the region. And it bounced back. It got over. Everything gets over eventually. So it's, it's wrong for us to presume that it will never get over. It's a black swan event. It has never happened before. And everything that we're saying today is very speculative. So we can't, it will be wrong for me to say it's going to happen tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. But we'll have to hold on to what we have. We'll have to be patient. And we'll have to, as every institution is doing currently, is we need to sharpen our tools. Because when we are going to be back, we're going to be back with the bank. And that's going to happen very soon. And that's what we can say. Um, about job losses, about scope of jobs, when there is a global setback, there would be a, a setback in terms of recruitment. We'll have to, because at the end of the day, we are running. So we'll have, well, there would be some impact on all of us in a way, and we'll have to uh, accept it and move forward. In terms of scope for a hospitality professional, I mean, if you have to give example of my friends, I've got friends who run IT companies. I've got friends who run hotel companies. I've got friends who run airports. And I've got friends who also uh, run a facility management company. So the scope and spectrum for a hospitality profession is immense. And we can, as uh, Husnaji very clearly mentioned, that we are prepared in a way that we can adapt and run businesses of different, different uh, models. And that is the benefit of us being hospitality profession. And once I will quote a very prominent doctor who has hospitals of his own across uh, India, once mentioned to me over, over a conversation that there is nothing a hospitality professional that uh, cannot, cannot do. It's only the surgeries that probably can't do, but everything else is possible for them. So I think we all have to be positive and we all have to expect that the human mindset changes, people start traveling and, and the government and everyone is facilitating for people to travel, business to thrive. And as soon as uh, the, everything falls in place, we will move on from a survival mode to a tribal mode. And that's what we all are looking forward to. So soap new skills, get ready for the battle as it uh, comes to you. Competition will always be there. It's always good to have competition because it prepares ourselves. It keeps ourselves agile and we move forward as, as, as uh, professionals in coming days. Um, thank you. Thank you, Saurabh. Um, I'd like to invite Mr. Ravla to answer the next question um, from Somyajit Chakravarti. His question is that as the title of this program mentions, Aditi Devo Bhava is indeed the main mantra of the hospitality industry. And one of our main objectives is to interact with the guests and um, you know, the, the art of entertainment, like you said. And as, a, as one of the speakers has already mentioned, the biggest change um, will be that you're wearing a mask and the smiles will not be visible anymore. And I know in my own hotel, I've been teaching um, our staff that it's their natural inclination to walk towards a guest to help them out. Now they have to consciously step back. You know, normally when a guest stands up, you walk towards them to offer your service. But now when a guest stands up, you have to consciously walk back because of the focus on physical distancing. So how is the hospitality industry maintaining this sort of spirit of, of um, welcoming and hospitality with the fact that often this is being hidden by physical distancing and um, the wearing of masks? So how does one um, deal with this as a hotelier? Um, just unmute yourself, please, Ajay. Ajay, uh, uh, unmute yourself. You're on mute. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I think that's a really good question. And I was thinking while you were talking about what, what's currently happening at my place. <coughs> I beg your pardon. And I think that uh, while the, the smiles are hidden, but uh, body, body language is also a very strong, uh, is a very strong medium of con you know of contact within or communication within people and there have been books which i'm sure you've also read uh, i think it was desmond morris who wrote who wrote a book called man watching which was completely back then 
about body language. So I think a lot of it comes from body language and also I think what guests appreciate is that uh, I don't want to use the word deference, so I'll use the word respect, that you are respecting their well-being and therefore being cautious about your contact with them is in itself a very positive reinforcement. It's also funny how many times you use the word positive in this entire dialogue because that's the one thing everybody's been running away from. But yes, I think, uh, I think that body language is going to become more important till the masks go away. Right. Yes, um, I think that's, that's definitely something um, to think about. And also the fact that hospitality is not just about, um, you know, the, the smiles. It's also about getting the job done of organizing the perfect experience. And I think if, if through your efficiency, um, you're able to, like you're saying at the Rajbari, you're able to separate people for meals, you're able to give great experience dining, even though the staff are not sort of um, buzzing around them, the smiles and the, the, the effectiveness will come through, through, through the actions. And, um, you know, the smiles, I know from, from the experience even in our hotels, the masks are there, but the smiles sort of come through the eyes, they come through, you know, of course, the body language as well. So uh, it, it will be a bigger effort, but, you know, um, it's definitely something that I think we can, we can surpass. But it's, that was a good question because it is, Sort of yeah. the essence of hospitality is the smile and you know it, it is the greeting and but i i think you know we we can um sort of uh surpass this uh, sorry did you want to add anything to this question no i, I think mr Rauler presented it very nicely i think and that's very positive what is that. thank you okay Great. So now the next set of questions are, I think, more towards the institutes about, you know, is it worth applying for a career in hospitality during this terrible thing? Uh, parents are not encouraging their children towards hospitality because they think um, that, you know, the fear of layoffs and the fear of, you know, reduced salaries and things like that. Is this the right time to work in hospitality? Um, so I'll invite either of um, the three of you from the institutes to take um, these questions. Uh, uh, if I may, uh, Husna, uh, I would like to start off here saying that hospitality management is beyond hotels. It's not just hotels. Uh, hospitality is a career that prepares you for any service industry because it's focused on uh, guest satisfaction, dealing with people, uh, uh, delivering service. So you will find hospitality management graduates even in banks, the retail sectors, insurance, medical profession, everywhere you will find hospitality uh, graduates. So it's basically the art of rendering the service with warmth and that is what takes, makes hospitality a career beyond hotels. So definitely I would say this would be uh, the right time to go for hospitality because as soon as the pandemic is over and even now we can see new careers are emerging where service is still the keyword. And there the hospitality managements are very, management graduates are very, very much in demand. Thank you, thank you. Um, Dr. Millen, would you like to add? Uh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I, I, would, I would like to give a little different perspective on that. As there are, uh, you know, even as a principal, a lot of parents are calling me and those who are graduating this year, and there are a lot of questions coming on. And those who are new parents, you know, new admission who are going to take place, they're asking so many questions. What and why we should study hospital management, a hospitality management course. Now, there are one thing I can tell you that if you see the course design across India, because I have taught in IHC Morangabad Taj College, which is affiliated to University of Huddersfield, to Macau, where I'm you know, currently working with, the entire course is such that there is only not only four departments are there in the course. There are nutrition, there are facility management, there are different management subjects are there. So one of my students, you know, she called me that she's working right now as a director of operation for nutrition. So she's a she's become now scientist. So you know, if you see the course uh, entire structure of four year which is BGM City or we call about the BGTM or call MTTM or MSC program, the entire program in such a way you have to just reimagine. 
you have to revisit the course you know again and this is a good time especially those who are going to pass out this is good time they can continue their study with the master program like they can go for mttm that we offer msc they can go for and you know there's a subject called organization change and effective that i love to teach and i always teach my students so they were asking sir what do you mean by i said this is a great example right now organization change and effective entire organization is changing so hospitality again i would say do not just consider the four departments and rooms and fnb business it is much beyond that so if you talk about hr there are so many students who are doing a research on that there are so many students who have done masters and they are doing phd and they are working abroad with a very good organization they are doing a conducting a research there are some good students who are working a social work based on this because hospitality people know how to deal with people uh, some days back i was having discussion with uh, you know the hr head of you uh, know spencer and he was saying sir you know i am pass out from i am btech and pass out from xy jamshedpur but the best outlet manager in entire pan india is your hotel management graduate they know if a customer is coming you know in a hotel we call guest we call atithi okay but you know in a hospital we call a patient we in a you know like retail outlet we call as a you know they are a customer but the way we can deal our student can deal you know hoteliers can deal with everyone with a human index they know the human value they know happiness how the what the happiness is all about it is not just like that you know the people are coming and you are giving any kind of services you are any any kind of services and for every parents again i am telling you this is a, just a temporary phase do not only think again and again i am telling you everyone do not only think this is the only hospitality who has got the worst hit there are so many sectors entire world is facing a challenge it is a either it is a hospitality or pharma or automobile or anyone just be patient reimagine reengineering revisit and rescale you know there are there are so many things that you could not study maybe you know uh, we just pass first semester second semester third semester and in between if you jo- go back and revisit what i have studied in five semester see the subjects what were you liking and disliking there are so many things available online you can call back to your faculty member you can ask them that okay just tell me there are so many chefs are there who left the hotels and if you go to any retail outlet like spencer or big bazaar you will find out of 100 items 80 items are food packets whether it is a, like a biscuits or it is a ashirwad atta or it is a, or any 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 anything you can talk about who are preparing this this is all done by our chefs they all are hotel management graduates who have reengineered and they are getting a very good salary there are there are some other people you know who have ventured into the business of facility planning there are some of the hospitality management graduates who are doing a very good architect there are some of the people who are oclp pass out and they are doing a wonderful architecture business so it is you that you have to decide time will be remain same you know mike tyson said it is not that some you know when you are fighting in the ring it is not that somebody is hitting you or you are great you know it is the time within two or three minutes when you are down and when you think and you regain everything and you bounce back and you wait you know in australian army there's a process of recruitment they see if if in your lifetime if in your career if you have never failed they don't select you because people know who can only bounce back they those who have bounced back in the life they know how to because what mr gosal said and what mr ravla said that yes life is not like a you know like a rose bed rose bed no everything is when you are doing a business you will get a setback when i was doing my hotel man from ihm bhubaneswar there was a hit there was a you know we were not able to find any jobs but again we have settled ourselves so this is the attitude which keeps you high so my sincere suggestion to all the parents all the students do not worry this is a time to be patient because if you allow your mind to move here and there it will not work keep yourself meditate have a good time with your teacher talk to your people if you have done your training talk to the people from where you have done your training they will guide you your faculty members will guide you and these kind of webinars uh, they are very lucky ma'am you know during our time we you we used to only go back to our teachers so what will happen now no company is coming there is a 26 by 11 this situation and there are series of there are series of one of my colleague was working with you know sales head for when the motor he was saying milin this is every year issue it comes and it goes 
but we have to come back and just tell me who are the industry who have closed their doors they all are working look at the you know pharmaceutical company they are working entire world is working on you know vaccine still they are not getting success but have they stopped working no till the time you are running you are you are you know away from everyone you are you can be number one the moment you stop running you cannot be number one so stop do not stop running go ahead do the things and enjoy your you know teaching learning why we are you know we are not today what we are today what mr gosal said and every panelist and hushna you can also say share this we are today because not on the teaching what we have learned till now so learning is your individual capacity there are so many things are around in the world there are good or bad you know i was uh, attending one program yesterday from aict atal program very very thoughtful you know speak one one of the speaker said we are the mind we only remember the bad things but just imagine during this covid period after 20 years i was with my mom and dad for two and a half months this is amazing thing the corona has given but we we always think about the negative part so this is bad this is not going well why it is not going it is it is also there people are you know with their family i can i can understand how my wife was going through since last so many years i was not able to help now i also help her so my daughter who is just 10 year old she told me daddy you are first time giving so much of time to us so you know this is this is how we have to evolve ourselves so do not go for wrong thinking and let the industry and academic to think about the pros and cons how much money we have lost and all that you are a student you just concentrate on academics be with your academics talk to them and industry will come back industry know the business because there are people like mr goshal people like mr ravla they will come back and they are coming back and academic has also changed a lot and we will come back very soon i think i have tried to you know uh, give some kind of you know answer to all my students and parents thank you dr milan that's an ex very very comprehensive answer and i think the focus that you you've talked about is really the resilience that yes. a hospitality student needs and even when even when things even before covid one of the big attributes you need as a hospitality profession professional is resilience sometimes your shifts go on for you know 24 hours and sometimes you have to answer your phone 24 hours a day sometimes you've got to be up at 3 in the morning so that you can be there for the 6 a.m breakfast shift sometimes your your dinner service may go up till 2 in the morning and you've got to just come back to work or you've got to commute to us to get home that resilience that you need as a hospitality professional is something that this mental challenge of waiting covid out but seeing the positives is only going to help you do because hospitality is an industry that needs you to be tough strong flexible adaptable you know you may have a guest that just behaves so badly and you need to think of a creative way on how to handle them or you know even if you're just in housekeeping um you know you may need something that needs to 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 react to an emergency so use these challenges to become stronger people in terms of your knowledge and in terms of your outlook and um you know take up all these positive um bits of advice that are being um given to you i will try i will add on one thing if you allow me yes of course uh, you know Uh, the human have a tendency you know like if you traveling if you have to travel 500 kilometers and you are driving your car and suddenly you see there is accident but you say oh nothing will happen to me i can i will reach to 500 kilometers this kind of optimism is required there are so many doctors who visit covid patient every day see the optimism he thinks that i'll go for my duty i will back and again i will go by tomorrow and he thinks that everything is there he know that i'm dealing with covid patient but right now we are not dealing with covid patient right now so optimism is very very important and human have a tendency you know we we drive 500 km 600 km we see there are so many obstacles on the road but we think oh nothing will happen to me oh i am fine i will cover the road right so when we take admission we think we'll pass when we study we think we'll get a job so keep that hope and keep that optimism it's a just a temporary phase and this is from my end thank you dr milan um and i'll just ask uh, mr ghosh to just um sum up the the questions regarding to uh you know hospitality as a career one of the questions um that has been asked is will there be any changes in the the, the way that courses are designed because of covid i think this has been answered already but i would just like to invite you to maybe share some extra thoughts on the changes in um hospitality training um post uh, covid 
no the basic uh, structures of the basic syllabus will be same but we will be adding some new uh, subjects such as as i said earlier sales and marketing with the digital marketing aspect will come into part as nowadays lot of webinars uh, are uh, happening so the students have to learn how to contact webinars through zoom platform through google meet or through google classrooms so these uh, digital platforms need to learn by the student apart from these uh, students need to learn revenue management uh, uh, as i said revenue management is also uh, will be an uh, important part and these things will come into play apart from the regular subjects which is food production front office housekeeping and food and beverage management and also travel and tourism is obviously there in the uh, in the course curriculum so these uh, two three couple of uh, changes will be there so as i said the, uh, this thing will help the help the students to shape their career in future so that students will not feel any problem later on maybe in the coming days okay thank you mr gorsh that was very thank well you. answered um just a question directed towards um ms uh, chaudhry uh, um there's a third year student who's asking um about how her specialist um skills are, are housekeeping um so she's saying that how does she proceed in enhancing her skills if she's limited to um the housekeeping uh area uh, again i think it's been touched on before but maybe you can elaborate on how people who feel that they are specializing in something in their third year perhaps can make use of this pandemic to maybe expand their skills and grow absolutely thank you, thank you so much and uh, that's a great question i must say uh i just had said before that uh, there should be an absolute change in the mindset now and uh, apart from your skill set in housekeeping you need to be a multitasker which most hoteliers are and uh, you should be prepared to move for maybe a little bit into food and beverage as well uh, if required uh, do an extra 2 hours in front office because this is what is going to be in demand by the hoteliers when they recruit for the next year because uh, there would be no requirement for absolute specialization rather as i said we would require more all rounders uh, who can fit in anywhere and everywhere so uh, of course housekeeping is a great area to specialize in because it gives you opening uh, not only in the hotels per se as facility managers into uh, malls uh, different organization keeping the upkeep of the organization logistic management but definitely look at multitasking open yourself up to the other areas and the other departments as well so that if need be you can also do a time in front office or food and beverage because that could be a possible question which the recruiter will ask you when they are recruiting in the campus interview next time thank you um and i'm just going to just go over some of the other questions about how to enhance practical skills um because you know people are not hiring i think these questions have all been answered in terms of just you know enhancing whatever skills you can through knowledge and webinars and things like that um is at is there an added advantage of having a healthcare background um being in hospitality absolutely i mean all rounders are like i said at a premium now so any healthcare background will only enhance your your higher ability and your career prospects um i'm just going to now circle back to um saurav again um there are a couple of questions on how hotels will be handling weddings uh, maybe mice events which i think this is a very relevant question um the difference between um a bachelor's versus masters candidate i don't know whether you'd like to take that question on as well um but also um are you hiring for internships and you know how should uh, prospective students look upon uh, these events so so one would be of course the handling of big events weddings and mice arrangements and the other one in terms of qualifications um are different qualifications more appealing um at, at the moment and post covid thank you so usna ji and um, uh, i think that's a very interesting question in terms of how we react to situation we are broadly guided by directives from ministry of home affairs and uh, directives given by who as well as certain parameters which are over and beyond decided by the organization so that is becoming our guiding principle during these days so if the government street uh, restricts us to operate within the certain parameter we will have to and that's that's a minimum that we can do and whatever we can do extra to ensure 
that every guest who are coming to the hotel and every employee and every partner of ours or safe, it's our responsibility to do so. So um, it, there is no clear answer to how government will direct us and how we would progress in terms of either weddings or conferences or mice. It will all depend on circumstances and how the whole COVID situation phase out. So that, that's one part of the answer. Uh, the other part of the answer in terms of internship and training, at the moment what every hotel and I think every organization, and that's the kind of uh, directive government is also giving us, is operating on minimal requirements. So what we're trying to do is to expose our team members to the minimal extent that we can. By doing that, what we're doing that we have, we have lesser number of people having the chance of getting infected. So we will have to continue doing that. And if you are due for your internship at the moment, it's the best that you stay back at home and take minimal chance of getting infected. And that's how we can serve each other. And that's what we are doing at the hotel. So till the situation improves, till uh, I think government decides to a huge extent that the things are under their absolute control, we'll have to wait and watch of how things plays out. I think that covers the questions, Musnaji. Yes, I think so. I, I think nobody really has a crystal ball. Nobody right. can predict when this vaccine is coming out. So I don't think it's fair for anyone to ask, you know, the prime minister of the country, the president of the USA. No can nobody can give you an answer yeah. as to when this is going to end. All we can take um, comfort in is the fact that the economy is opening up. Um, the government is trying its best um, to, to get people back in action. I mean, you can see even in the city, um, you know, bars have opened, restaurants have opened, slowly, slowly things are opening. And by the grace of God, things have not exploded the way they could have. It's, it's far from over. Um, it, it, nobody's saying it, it, that it is over, but things are definitely opening up and people are traveling, hotels are filling up. So I think everyone just has to be patient. They need to respect the fact that the, the, the way to spread this disease is by contact. So for the moment, people need to stay home. They need to isolate. They need to do what they can to stop the spread of the disease. And the more the entire country does that, the faster we will be able to um, you know, resume normality again. There will be a new normal. And let's hope the new normal is better. Let's hope the new normal is, is safer. It's better for the environment. It's better for health and hygiene. It's better for... Um, you know, sustainability. Let's hope that the new normal is a better one. And anyone aspiring for a career will have a part in that new normal. So, you know, one shouldn't lose any hope and um, we, we, we will be back. Uh, so if there's anything else that any of the panelists would like to share, I think the questions are, are largely repetitive now in terms of, you know, um, multi-skilling and um, internships and things like that. But if there's anything else that um, any of you would like to share, um, please feel free to, to contribute right now as, as I think we can probably move towards closing the session. So any last thoughts from, from each of you? Let's start with Mr. Goshal. Anything with Saurabh? Any, any final thoughts? From, uh, from my end, madam. Yes, yes. Admission in Guru Nanak yes. Total Management is going on. So Excellent. students, those who Excellent. are interested, yeah. definitely can come to the college. Our college is open. Excellent. So I hope all the hotel management colleges will say the same thing. back it's the reality is that international guests may not be back till october 2021 right I, I was very optimistic in thinking that it would be um march 2021 but i believe it may now be october 21 so what is the positive side of that for our hotels that mainly deal with international guests we focus on the domestic right just as international guests cannot come in many of our domestic um uh, citizens of india cannot travel out 
right? So let's attract them. Let's find ways to get domestic um, travelers to explore their own country. And the Ministry of Tourism has been running these Dekho Apna Desh webinars regularly ever since March. And there is huge interest in driving holidays, in um, you know, work, like I said, work from resorts, uh, staycations, so that, you know, like I said, again, all, every reason to be positive. Um, so any, anything else from any of the panelists? Uh, Mr. Ravla, Ms. Uh, I think uh, I'll just take the opportunity to address the students who is part of this webinar. I think it, it's worked out to your best advantage that you have so much time in your hand to to develop yourself, develop yourself academically. Because once you are part of the industry, you wouldn't have much time then to develop yourself because you'll be working. So the world is now in your fingertips. Utilize this to your best ability. Get to learn new trade. Get to gain more knowledge. The multiple knowledge that you can acquire about the industry and beyond the industry as well. So utilize the time that you have in hand to acquire those knowledge, which will come handy when you become part of the industry. I mean, Give you an example. If you if you are interested in wine, you can go digitally and learn about wines which are getting manufactured globally in different parts of the world, and learn about their characteristics and the, the production that's coming up of the year and how the taste tasting notes would be and so on and so forth. So you can grow gain immense knowledge. I think Dr. Million was also touching upon that, and develop yourself as a professional and make the best use of the time. And when things are good, jobs are are open up, uh, industries open up. You will be back in business and you will crave for this time that you have in your hand. So make the best use of it. Uh, I fully agree with uh, Mr. Goshal what he's saying. That yes, this is time. And again, I'm telling you, go back to your teacher. Go back to the expert. Like Mr. Goshal is a wine expert. So if you are, this is a time, you know, to, to you know, move with your network. If you have done your initial training, from which hotel you have done your training. So network with those people. Talk to them learn rewind and this is a really great time you know and we all are excited uh, if i if you ask me I am, I am i'm working since you know morning to evening in the campus coming every day to the campus and as educator if we will you know what mr kosal said really very very happy as he's a isl employee i also work for nine years with tata you know that we are not exposing our employee too much to the guests it's very rightly said sir and same way we are also in the campus we are not exposing we are calling, not calling the faculty in the campus. We are asking them, take your classes online. But education should not be stopped. Same way, you know, we, we have to take care of each other. Right now, the time is something like that. And uh, if you go, you now every institution, every institute uh, have their own website. Entire detail, detail is there. Go with affiliations, see the college, and talk to them, and discuss with the faculty members, and go about it. There's nothing wrong into that. And one last thing, stay safe and stay healthy. It's a very, very important thing. It's really exciting. I have learned a lot uh, from Mr. Gosal and all, all of colleagues that, yes, the, what the world is practicing right now. Absolutely. Yeah, That's same great. here. I have learned so many things from Mr. Gosal as well. Thank you, Mr. Gosal, for sharing your thoughts to us. Thank you very much. And Mr. Raula as well. Yes. There's, there's one more question um, from um, somebody in the audience about um, the revenue gap factor and about how hotels are dealing with the loss of revenue if you have to leave a room to rest for 48 hours. And I think I can um, confidently say that, you know, this is something that as a student, you shouldn't worry about, you know, let the people that run the businesses deal with that. We are trying to survive and, you know, we're confident that most businesses will survive. And um, it's something that, uh, you know, one has to be creative about finding forms of revenue, but um, you know, that's, that's not something that, that prospective students should worry about. Am I correct in saying that, Sora? I think. Um, absolutely. I think this is the time we take care of each other. We take care of the community as a whole. That's the minimum that we can do to, for everyone's well-being. And we must do that. And let's not, let's not look at business at this moment. Let's all get over and there'll be ample time for us to do business. And we will be back in business. Absolutely. Mr. Ravla, some closing remarks from you. Just unmute yourself. Same mistake twice in one hour. <laughs> uh, I was saying stay safe, everybody. It's, uh, I hope you've been able to get some uh, essence of uh, 
the fact that none of us who are hospitality professionals, owners, educationists on this panel uh, feel anything but uh, positive about the way to go forward. And uh, if any of you have any questions, please feel free to write to me. Uh, my email is ajay at the rajbari.com. And for those of you who have uh, recently passed out and are looking for jobs, we still have a few openings. So please feel free to write to us for that. And I wish you all fair weather and Godspeed. Okay, one last uh, question um, for you that I had on my list before um, the session that I, I think I'll take the opportunity to ask. Um, how can more women be encouraged to join the hospitality sector? And um, what is your mantra for success? I think that would be a good closing um, question um, for, for you to, to sort of... Well, Husna, who, who, who better than you to actually answer that question? Because what you've done in the industry is iconic. You've created such a fabulous property and uh, the, the standards that you have set, the kind of uh, involvement that you've got from your communities in Darjeeling. And uh, I think this question I'm going to send back into your court to <laughs> ask you to share with us what you think is a good way. Right. Well, I, for me, it's all about the journey of, of life. I'm a science teacher by profession and never expected to be in hospitality. So I think everyone should be open-minded and see where their journey takes them. Um, they may, from this pandemic, end up in hospitality, not having ever expected to have been a hospitality student. Um, but I think it, it um, might be nice to hear from um, the panelists in the institutions as well in terms of encouraging women and roles in hospitality. My experience is that it's a very well-represented um, there's a very good gender balance in hospitality. Uh, am I correct in saying that, Ms. Um, Maitriji? Would you like? Uh, in fact, uh, what I would say, the percentage of uh, ladies joining hospitality earlier was much lesser, which has improved more uh, over the last decade. More women are coming and joining. Uh, yes, uh, hospitality is a very, very demanding profession. So in terms of working hours and uh, uh, the stamina factors. Uh, sometimes we have a little problem in coping uh, with that, but definitely the uh, the education institutes can take up a role to uh, mentor the students who can you know who are shaped uh, in terms of uh, mind how to uh, face these challenges in the hospitality industry. And I think women are doing exceptionally well, especially with the emotional qu quotient with the which they can handle the guests. They are really leading the hospitality profession. Today, I think uh, the opportunity uh, for women in this uh, sector is, um, has increased by far most. So th there is uh, no way I can say that it's a detriment. Uh, definitely women are coming forward to join the uh, hospitality industry. Wonderful. I, I would completely endorse that view. And if there's anyone, any, any, any other thoughts from the panelists, um, in terms of gender equality in the hospitality industry. I, I think it's a reasonably well represented um, and I can see from the shaking of your heads that <laughs> that's thing. So if there are no more questions, it's my, um, my pleasure to sum up um, the session. I think we've, we've talked about a range of issues from safety, trust, flexibility in terms of uh, being the, the, the sort of cornerstones of the hospitality industry about how um, despite the, the current crisis that we are in, things will bounce back. Um, I think leisure, mice, um, heritage, luxury, uh, as well as homestays, uh, restaurants, um, even hospitality in, in the medical uh, workplace will also all bounce back. Um, people will have enough jobs in the future, even though it doesn't seem like that right now, because there's a feel good factor. And after the lockdown, people do want to be able to enjoy hospitality, which is basically entertainment. Um, smart technology will play a greater role. Um, and I think these are all skills that you will be taught by these wonderful institutions that have been part of this, the, the emphasis on, again, as I said, health and hygiene. Um, and you know, this, in terms of skill sets and specializations, I think the mindset should change in terms of being more multi-skilled and having an open mind and being able to just do whatever you're asked to do. Um, you know, if you're, if you're there, 
in the space and there's a crisis or there's a request or there's a need or there's absentism because somebody hasn't been able to come to work because, because for whatever reason, you should be able to fill their shoes um, without um, you know, worrying about it. And these excellent institutions that have been part of the panel today are all gearing um, up. I've learned so much about what's happening in the field of hospitality training today. And it's, it's, I'm so encouraged by, by the way that all three of you have talked about how you are grooming students. Um, I think uh, Saurav and Ajay would, would uh, agree with me in saying that, you know, this is very encouraging for us because we know that the kind of students that are coming out of your institutes are going Absolutely. to be groomed with the right attitudes, the right skills, and the right kind of encouragement because um, today has been about pure encouragement. Um, and I would like to back it up from the industry side by saying that, you know, this is what we need. So, you know, you're all very much in the right hands and definitely apply right now. Definitely continue with your journey. There should be no looking back um, because things are already bouncing back and the future is, is extremely bright. And as a science teacher who's ended up in hospitality, I can tell you it's the best industry in the world. You meet such fascinating people, you travel. Um, if you have the resilience to, to sort of deal with the hours and the, the, the questions and the inquiries and the, the crises that you will face, um, it's a wonderful career. Okay, thank you. Anything thank else you. before we end from ABP is, is somebody? Around. Thank you so much. No, so you can uh, we just continue now. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.